My name is John Puthulil. I thank you all for coming and I thank the organizers for arranging this. The topic is type 2 diabetes, more specifically the role of insulin in type 2 diabetes. In India, right now we have 61 million people with type 2 diabetes. 30% of the newly diagnosed type 2 diabetics are between the ages 36 and 40. And this is not uncommon or unusual because everywhere in the world the same thing is happening. The incidence of type 2 diabetes is increasing and the person affected is getting younger and younger. Why? According to the experts, insulin resistance is the cause of type 2 diabetes. But we all know that insulin resistance is not a contagious disease. So how can it come up all over the world unless human beings are evolving to become resistant? And that is, in my opinion, very unlikely. Why do I say that? I say that because the concept of insulin resistance itself has never been validated. A scientific concept can be validated either through logic or mechanism, preferably both, and then supported by measurement. Let us look at the logic. There are 200 different types of cell in the body. Only three are involved in the insulin resistance program. 197, no resistance, only three. So what I'm saying is, based on logic and mechanism, insulin theory has, insulin resistance theory has never been validated. Then we can ask the question, if it has never been validated, how did it come about? Insulin is a hormone that is released by the pancreas when your blood sugar level goes up after every meal. Insulin accompanies glucose to every cell. Insulin does not get inside a cell. All insulin can do is to ring the bell on the cell wall to let the cell know glucose is outside. You see, glucose cannot do that. There is no receptor on the cell wall for glucose, but there is one for insulin. In type 1, the pancreas does not produce insulin. So sugar cannot get into the organs. The organs fail to function. And this happens most of the time in early ages, younger age, and the patients die. They used to die until insulin was discovered. And when insulin was injected into a child with type 1 diabetes, it was a miracle. They survived, their lifespan became almost normal. The endocrinologists became the experts in high blood sugar because insulin sa saved lives of thousands of type 1 diabetic patients. So when adults started turning up with high blood sugar, naturally they thought this is a problem with insulin. This is the same type 1 but happening in adults. So they injected them with insulin and sure enough the blood sugar went down and everybody was happy. So high blood sugar, whether, type, uh, whether adult or children, all treated by endocrinologists. Then came the finding that adults when they have high blood sugar, they also have normal or even higher levels of insulin in their body at the same time. Now that created a problem. The endocrinologist can say, well, this is not a hormonal disease, or they, can ha they have to have an explanation. So the easiest way out was insulin is there, but the cells are not responding. They are resisting the message from insulin. So the insulin resistance was born. It was not based on evidence. Type 2 diabetes is supposed to be a progressive disease. Why is it progressive? Not because more cells are becoming resistant, not because the cells are becoming resistant to more hormones, but because the complications are getting worse. Is it possible it is progressive because the treatment is wrong? In any disease, if the treatment is not correct, it's going to get worse. So that is the question I am asking. When I talked with one person, a very 
knowledgeable professor, he said, there are 3,000 articles based on insulin resistance. So how can you say it is wrong? Another person said, I don't need proof. You know, I know people went to the moon. I don't have to go there and see it. I trust the person, the messenger. So if endocrinologists say there is insulin resistance, there is insulin resistance. And another person said, John, your theory is too simple. Type 2 diabetes is much more complicated than this. So what is the simple theory that I'm going to propose? My simple answer is grains. Why? During the last 50 years, the overall production of grains in the world has gone up from 0.8 billion metric tons to 2.8 billion metric tons. More importantly, the energy consumption and the percentage of energy consumed from grain-based product have gone up in every country where type 2 diabetes is increasing. It used to be below 30 percent, now it is 50 percent in the United States and developed countries because they eat more meat and protein, it is 70 percent in developing countries such as India. Grain is what you are consuming most in terms of energy intake during each meal or every day. Now, let me see whether I can give you some mechanisms that make sense. Each kernel of grain is composed of thousands of molecules of complex carbohydrate. Each complex carbohydrate can have up to 200,000 molecules of glucose. Again, each molecule of complex carbohydrate can have up to 200,000 molecules of glucose. So when you eat anything with starch or grain flour, you are literally eating pure glucose. Whether it is from rice or wheat, whether it is whole grain or multigrain, makes no difference. The body can hold on to 120 grams of glucose as glycogen in the liver to be released back into the blood when the blood sugar goes down. Everything else has to be converted to fatty acid and fat for long-term storage. When the fat cells are full, the fatty acids stay in the blood. Each cell is like a hybrid car. They can use either glucose, it can use either glucose or fatty acid to produce energy. If fatty acids are available, the, mu the muscles will naturally switch to fatty acids, leaving glucose in the blood. When you have not eaten all day, when you are fasting, when you are ill, your muscles are still working. Why? Because they are using fatty acid. That's a normal metabolic process. What is happening here is that normal metabolic process has never been switched off because there is so much fatty acids in the system. So the glucose kept accumulating and you are tested and you are a diabetic. So the problem is not insulin, the problem is what is your fat storage capacity. So the more you eat, the more carbohydrates from grains you consume, the earlier you fill up. So the age is coming down because we can afford, people, in, young people in India can afford more. And more of what they eat is from grains. The same thing is happening in China, in United States, uh, Middle East, everywhere in the world, the same thing is happening because over the last 50 years, grain production, as I said, has gone up. What proof do I have? One proof I can offer is about the Native Americans. When they were brought to the reservations, type 2 diabetes was hardly known. They, they didn't have it. But within two generations, they have a high incidence of type 2 diabetes. Pima Indians have 50% of adults with type 2 diabetes. And the other tribes are not much different because they have 30%. Why? In the wild, they moved from food source to food source. They never cultivated grains, so they did not eat any cultivated grains. In 1970, a researcher in Australia 
ask 10 aborigines with type 2 diabetes, can they go back to the wild and live like their ancestors did? Within eight weeks, their diabetes disappeared. They didn't have to take any more diabetic medications. Why? Same thing. There were no cultivated grains in the wild. So now, you have two options. The first op one option is you can keep on, you know, if you're a type 1 diabetic, yes, you have to take insulin. There is no choice. If you're a type 2 diabetic, you can take insulin, keep your blood sugar down, but let me just point out some concerns that I have, why I call insulin a troublemaker. One, it makes you hungry. Most time, if you are a type 2 diabetic, you are asked to lose weight. And you are asked to lose weight and you are injecting something that makes you hungry. To me, it is not treatment, it is punishment. If you have an infection, and if you become resistant to an antibiotic, will the doctor give you the same antibiotic? No. If you have cancer, and if you become resistant to the chemo, will the doctor give you the same chemo? No. But if you have type 2 diabetes, you are insulin resistant, what does the doctor give you? Insulin. Yes, you keep the sugar down, after a while the sugar goes up, what does the doctor give you? Will he change it? No. He will give you more. What's the logic? If you, anybody can understand the logic, please tell me. Now let us say you kept the sugar down, A1C below 7, religiously. Does that mean you can avoid complications of type 2 diabetes? You can still go blind. You can still have a heart attack. You can still lose your kidneys, your, your toes, your legs. So somebody, please tell me what is the reason to prescribe insulin to a type 2 diabetic? I'm still trying to figure out the answer. Even more ominous is the fourth point regarding the link between insulin and cancer. You see, insulin promotes growth of cells, all cells in the body, including cancer cells. So if you happen to have cancer cells in your body at the time you take insulin, you're actually promoting growth of cancer. And that will be the next epidemic the world will be facing. In India, more and more people are using insulin early and earlier because the other medications are expensive. Insulin, people feel they are in control. They can measure it, they can inject it, they can measure the blood sugar level. That's all possible. But my point is, whether it is metformin, or whether it is glyburide, whether it is insulin, how does it work? Did it go out of your body? No. So you are hiding it from the blood, and you feel good about it. How is that going to help you? Where did that sugar come from to begin with? If you don't put it in your mouth, it cannot be in your blood. Do you want to put it in your mouth and take a medication to drive it out of blood? Isn't that what you're doing essentially? If you don't put it in the mouth, why do you need the medication? So that is what I'm suggesting. I thank you all for coming and listening to my talk. And I would like to summarize three points that I hope you will take home. First is, Insulin resistance, the concept of it, has never been validated through logic, mechanism, or measurement. Second, taking insulin injections will control your blood sugar, but you still can have complications associated with type 2 diabetes, and more importantly, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, cancer. Third, if you are serious about controlling your blood sugar, and reversing type 2 diabetes, I suggest that you start by avoiding grain and all grain flour products from your diet. Thank you.